to Obama, the dog of Rome. Today, we're slaughtering the soldiers of Bashar, and tomorrow, we'll be slaughtering your soldiers. And with Allah's permission, we will break this final and last crusade, and the Islamic State will soon, like your puppet David Cameron said, will begin to slaughter your people on your streets. 26-year-old former U.S. Army Ranger and humanitarian aide Peter Kasich was beheaded by ISIS in this video released Sunday. He was the fifth Western hostage to be killed by the Islamic State. Kasich was captured by ISIS last year. In his captivity, he converted to Islam, changing his name to Abdul Rahman Kasich. Kasich's parents maintained that his conversion was voluntary and tried desperately to use that idea as a way of pleading to his captors for his release, even appearing in a, vid in a video talking about their son's Muslim's faith while the mother wore a hijab. But his apparent conversion, like any other Western hostage, did little to save his life. Tom Rogan, columnist with the National Review, joins me now from Washington. Tom, you've written a piece entitled, What's Kasich's Beheading Tell Us in the National Review? And I think you make an important point because you say, beyond creating propaganda, the editors of the video, these irredeemable psychopaths, really, seek to intimidate, seek to instill fear among Western leaders. Do you think it's working? Hello, Marissa. Yeah, I think they are succeeding in the sense that they are actively recruiting people from uh, across the region, across the world indeed, and, and that was referenced by the leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, in an audio tape uh, about a week ago. But on, on the second point, in, in terms of their deterrent posture, I think the problem you see at the moment is that without the kind of force presence on the ground with special forces embedded with Iraqi special forces units and Kurdish Peshmerga forces and the Sunni tribes in Deir ez-Zor and Anbar provinces in Syria and Iraq, there's an absent capability or a weaker capability than there should be on the part of the coalition. Mm -hmm. And as long as the Islamic State retains its power bases, uh, even in, you know, just in simple key areas, uh, they'll continue to pose this uh, growing threat. And, and it's a growing threat because of the number of Europeans uh, that they have uh, who can, with their passports, then travel back home and, and cause havoc. So, you know, it's, it's an issue that is spreading and developing and without the capability to address it, it's just going to continue. Now, U.S. Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel said Sunday that the Pentagon is accelerating its mission to train the Iraqi forces. So I guess my question is, is this ultimately the best way forward? Because Americans previously have spent billions on training and equipping Iraqi forces. And then at the first sight of ISIS, the Iraqis basically handed over their equipment. So my question is, essentially, is this the best way? Well, I think the real difficulty is that you, to develop a cohesive armed force, you need to have a strong NCO corps, which is the sergeants and the strong platoon commanders, the lieutenants. And then you also need to have strong senior leadership. And on each of those counts, uh, the Iraqis really don't have that capability yet. It takes time, it takes culture, it takes willingness, it takes political leadership. And so in the interim, uh, simply relying on that is just not going to work. In the interim, because of the urgency of threat, you have to have capability that is pre-existing. And, and unfortunately, the only people who can do that at present, as I see it, are the coalition, uh, mobilizing different elements of those units, essentially stepping into the leadership vacuum and mobilizing those indigenous forces, whether it be the Iraqi military or the Peshmerga, et cetera, uh, into the fight. Uh, you need leadership is, is the key point. And, and you know, simply relying on indigenous forces without support, without active combat support, even in a limited way, is going to be, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. The video this time is a little bit different than what we've seen in the past. And just very quickly, you see some of the executioners, you can actually see their face, which is why France was able to identify one of them. Moreover, the location was identified as Debik, a, a Syrian village, just as you mentioned in your piece about 10 miles outside of Turkey. Are these guys becoming more brazen? And what is the significance of all of this? Yeah, it's a great question. Really important because they are clearly trying to, this is their... Uh, they are sending a very particular message to Western leaders. They're kind of the arrogance you see in the message in the sense they're showing European faces mm -hmm. as if to say, oh, you know, we've got you, we're coming for you, we've got people you don't know who among you is a threat. Uh, the fact that it's so close to Turkey, I mean, there's a theological significance to the particular village in question, but it also shows yeah. how much territory they control, the open environment. And yeah, so it, it, it's a major problem. And clearly the group is emboldened, and that and the psychological element is very important. Okay. All right, Tom. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure.